So one of my things is that, you know, when I'm talking to lacrosse coaches, and I believe I've consulted with seven of the top 20 NCAA cross programs in the nation so far. Uh, I say, let lacrosse train lacrosse. And for you, I say, let cross country train cross country. In other words, you know how to coach cross country, coach it. But what I encourage you to do is recruit and train athletes. I don't think there's enough, enough athletes running cross country. And the kids that are running cross country are not trained like athletes. They're trained for endurance only. So I say, be general in the weight room. And if your cross country team is never in the weight room, I, you're not training athletes. I believe you need to be extreme in speed training. If all you do is strides at the end of practice, you have no freaking idea about speed. You need to be extreme, which means you need to train it fresh, not at the end of a 10 mile run. And then you need to be specific in coaching cross country. And that's what you're good at. You're, you're good at getting kids to run a good 5K. But the other two things, I think the average distance coach needs help with. I believe we want to not only recruit apex predators, but we want to develop apex predators. And to that, I say, you got to sprint fast. You got to lift heavy. You got to jump high and far. And you got to balance. How many of those four things happen in cross country? Zero. Zero. You never sprint fast. You never lift heavy. You never jump high far. You never bounce. But guess what? That stuff never happens in lacrosse either. That does not happen in basketball either. Nobody is ever at max speed in a basketball game. Nobody ever lifts a heavy weight during a basketball game. I guess we do jump high and far and there is bounce. But two, two of those four things, uh, Steph Curry does not, does not do that on the floor. He does not sprint fast or lift heavy, but away from the sport, Steph Curry needs to do all four of these things because this builds the athlete. So the first thing that you've got to do in your program is to sprint. And I believe you need to sprint twice a week. I believe you've got to do it when fresh, which means you do it before practice, not after practice. And I think, you know, I 100% believe, Bush Jackson said this one time, if, if you're not wearing spikes and getting time, you ain't sprinting. If you're not wearing spikes and getting time, you ain't sprinting. He says it in a Cajun accent, which means a lot more than me saying it. But, but we've got to start sprinting our distance runners. Now, th these are triangles that I've created. Uh, I believe that conventional is that we want to create work capacity. That's conventional. We want to grind the shit out of kids. We, we want to work their ass off. And, and that will allow us to continue to work hard. I asked a college co uh, coach one time, he's a sprint coach even. I said, why do you practice for two hours in the fall? Why do you run so damn much? He says, well, we have to develop the capacity to work two hours a day in the spring. I'm like, so you're working hard to, so you can work hard? Doesn't performance play it? And he just blindly, he's just going in that direction. Um, and then, of course, when kids are beat up and tired all the time, all you can ask is for high effort. Um, it's not a performance model. Now, my model is that we want to develop apex predators. We want to develop speed and power. Uh, we believe that tired is the enemy, not the goal. We never want to burn the stake. Yes, by doing this, by stacking these things on top of each other, we will improve their capacity to do work. We don't have to run aerobic 10 milers to improve capacity. We can sprint to improve capacity. And then our top of the pyramid is performance, not high effort. Now, this uh, comes from a revolutionary distance coach named Lyle Knudsen. He's, he's no longer alive, but he saw the traditional model as a huge base of aerobic endurance followed by specific endurance. In other words, you're going to do like 10 miles a day, 100 miles a week or something all, all summer. And then for cross country, you're going to learn how to uh, run a little faster for 5K. That's the traditional model. It's always been the model, always will be. What he said was, let's develop speed. Let's develop the attributes of, of athletes power, speed, balance, 
uh, the ability, explosive ability, jump high, jump far. And then let's teach them to run further. That's called speed endurance. And then let's get specific. If, if we're running to run a fast 5K, then, then we'll start tra training for the 5K. So this is like, these things are diametrically opposed. These are like wildly new ideas. And by the way, Lau Knudsen had incredible success with these revolutionary ideas. Maybe the most important slide of the, of the day. Nido o omo wa ido oma ezu. It's Japanese for if you chase two rabbits, you'll catch none. Now, this slide is really meant for sprint coaches who are still addicted to volume. They're, they still want to run 15 200s on the first day. And I say one rabbit speed, one rabbit is endurance. If you chase them both, you'll never get fast. Period. What John O'Malley saw this slide and said, and this is so pure, John O'Malley, he said, but I have to chase both rabbits. And it's like, wow, that's right. A distance coach does have to chase both rabbits because if you only chase the aerobic engine part of training, you will never improve your speed. But if you only work on speed, you'll never have the endurance to run 5K. So you must chase both rabbits. If you only train at paces at or slower than what you've already accomplished, your body will never adapt to run faster. I will say it again. If you only train at paces at or slower than what you've already accomplished in your races, your body will not adapt to run faster. Now, most Distance coaches see that as, okay, we're going to go out and run some 65-second 400s. What I see is let's raise the damn ceiling of speed. Raise the ceiling of speed. I believe, like Bowerman, that extreme results never come from moderate exercise. Think about that for a minute. You do not go out and run five-minute miles every day in order to run a four-minute mile. No, you, you, you better push it. You better raise your ceiling if you're going to get extreme results. One of the things that every distance coach should do, and I, I don't know of a single distance coach who does this, not a single one measures top speed. Why wouldn't you want to know what your runner's top speed is. Now, we do a lot of 10 yard flies because there's a real quick recovery. Um, it's very efficient. We can go through a group of 50 uh, pretty damn fast. Um, uh, our distance program does 40 yard flies, which, which I think are really good. We, can't, we have a hard time doing them indoors because we have a little field house, we have 180 meter indoor track. So, so I, I think you can do either one. But if you have a free lap, you can do either one, do the division, and get miles per hour. Now, on my track team, I go 20, 21, 22, 23. I had 38 sprinters this year. 35 of the 38 ran 20 miles an hour or better. I only had two 23-mile-an-hour sprinters, and that's why we did not, we did not, uh, we were not all state in the four-by-one. You, you, you need more than two 23-mile-an-hour sprinters. In my experience, there are no cross-country runners running 22. None. Zero. Now, we have some guys that run 50 flat or 50 point in the 4x4 four four, um, that are cross-country runners. They are fast, athletic cross-country runners. But their miles per hour is in the 21s. They, uh, we have two of them. They're juniors right now. And I want to push them to 22 miles an hour next year. I don't care how good they are in cross country. I want their ceiling to go up. Now, if I was handing these bands out, and by the way, kids will wear these bands, they'll never take them off. Never. All my sprinters are wearing bands. If they hit 23 miles an hour, they wear the white, the black, the silver, and the gold. All four bands, they, they are so proud. 
In boys cross country, I would go 18, 19, 20, 21. If anybody runs 22, they probably should have been a sprinter and they're going to win so many damn races that you don't need to give them a band. They, they're going to win medals. And then for girls cross country, it's just minus three. You go 15 miles an hour, 16, 17, 18. One of the great things about bands is that for 400, around 420 bucks, you can get 300 of each. 420 bucks, you can get 300 of each. If you want to know where I get them, I will send you, uh, the company wrote an article about me and my miles per hour things. Um, my, what I would urge you to do is replace your bullshit warm up and don't tell me your warm up is all that great. I, I want to throw up every time I see any team warm up. I, it is, it is just disgusting. The lack of intent, the talking, uh, it is a waste of 20 or 30 minutes. Maybe it's a good time to take roll, but I think it's bullshit. Um, what I would replace your warm up with is two speed sessions and two X factor sessions every week, two speeds and two X's. So for the speed workout, I have a limited amount of time here, so I can't go through my speed workout. Just Google atomic speed workout. It takes 15 minutes. 10 speed drills, two time sprints. That's it. Well, it takes 15 minutes if you, only, if you do it solo. During that 15 minute workout, athletes are only working for 60 seconds. 60 seconds. It is the absolute perfect warm up. I'd hate the word warm up. For the weight room, it's the absolute perfect warm up for football practice, for lacrosse practice, or for cross country practice. Instead of a warm up, you will be getting something done. So just all you have to do is Google atomic speed workout or holler atomic speed workout. It is uh, it, it it's so easy, but nobody does it. Well, no cross country guys do it. <laughs>